Hey, bro. How you doing? Good, man. Look at that turnout on a Friday. That's awesome, guys. It's not bad. It's not bad. Not bad. Welcome to Louisville. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a minute since I've been to Kentucky, like almost two years. Oh, not bad. Not bad. So it's cool. It's like, what do you got going on here, man? Because that's amazing. This is a um, uh, bowl. I poured a bowl of tricks on my head this morning. <laughs> about say, there's a pack of fruit strike gum, one or the other. Yeah, maybe a little bit of both. I, I, uh, I've been going crazy with the hair lately. Um, if anybody follows me on social media, I had blue hair for a while. And then um, it, it was red, like flaming red for five days. And no photos got posted because I immediately had to dye it back brown for something. And I was so mad. That like the moment I got off set, I went and I I bleached it to the point where like my hair is falling out of my head. And I did this, and I'm gonna shave it at the beginning of the year because it's it's getting pretty dead. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So it's okay. Let's uh let's kind of go back to the beginning. What got you interested in performing? Um, I was a, a a very musical kid. I watched my dad performing and singing with with a band, and I started taking singing lessons and. That led to musical theater, as it does, and I was a theater kid for a while and sort of lost my mind doing that because theater kids are crazy, and uh, me being one of them. And um, that just sort of led me down the rabbit hole, and two years later, we were like packing up and moving to Los Angeles to try things out, and just good responses like at every incremental step of the way that, that led, led to now. Right, right, right. Well, what, was your, what do you consider to be your first gig? Uh, the Music Man. I did The Music Man when I was seven. I played Winthrop, the classic play, and uh, it was fun. I liked doing the lisp. Coming for me. Well, Fargo Wagon is the coming. <laughs> I just like, my immature seven-year-old ass just liked to do the, like spitting on the audience in the dress rehearsals. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. When did you, uh, when did you get bumped into uh, in the animation? When did that happen? I actually, funnily enough, the, the medium that got me into voiceover was radio which is, like, the weirdest thing to hear from someone under the age of <clears throat> 70. <laughs> but it's a, it's a beautiful medium that is, is still going strong. There's this awesome radio show called Adventures in Odyssey. Um, there's always one person, like, uh, like one or two people at every panel that are like, yeah, hey, I owe! Because it's, it's a really established show with a really big fan base, but the fan base doesn't go to conventions for whatever reason. Um, and I did that for five years, and that was my, like, entry-level on-the-job training gig. And... Uh, yeah, from there I, I got my first DC gig and, and the Scooby Doo episode after that, and that sort of led up. Let's uh yeah, let's talk about uh Billy Batson. Uh yeah. role you returned to several times. Uh, you know, the return to Black Adam and Yeah, that was the, the the one right after the radio show. Yeah, and then then they brought you back to play Billy a couple times too. Yeah, well, it was funny because it, it was three separate production teams, mm -hmm. and none of them were aware that I had done the role before. In fact, I auditioned separately for the same role three different times and booked it three different times through some cosmic accident. So I hope that they remember that I'm Billy Batson in most of their projects now and just call me next time. This character's Billy Batson, and he turns into this hero, Captain Marvel. Shiz <laughs> Heard it all before, kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, um, yeah, because they were, you know, years apart. Um, yeah. Superman Shazam, I was like 11 or 12 years old playing a much younger Billy, and then Justice League War, I, like, my voice had changed. I was a little older. That was three or four years later, and then um, they recently called me in again recently to do something, and it was, like, the, the, same, the same Billy, same younger voice, but I'm yeah. aged up. Mm, not bad, not bad. Well, hopefully there might be some doors opening when the movie hits. Here's hoping. I, when I saw they were making that, I'm like, yeah. I told my manager, like, get me in that, and then they hired someone who is, like, 13. I'm like, okay, well. Oh. <laughs> I'm old in Hollywood now. You're young in our hearts. Uh, <laughs> Legend of Korra, how'd that come about? Uh, that was just another thing. Like, I didn't even know what I was working on at the time. Um, and then I went back and watched Airbender. I was like, oh my god, I should have asked so many questions. Um, I, I did two separate roles for that, two separate times. Again, it's like they like, just like, separately auditioned me for things. And I just happened to, happened to end up showing up at the end of the day. The highlight of that was working with Andrea Romano, who I worked with on a couple other things as well. But she's now retired and... It's possibly Saint Andrea. I, I'd, I'd say it's pretty safe to say she's the most legendary voice director in history. Hey, you're absolutely correct. I, I think it would be sacrilegious to anyone else. She um, was a career maker of so many people, many people in this building besides yourself. Yeah, seriously. Um, so that that was a nice a nice thing. She's awesome to work with as well, and the show is it's wonderful. And she's that, directing now. What's that? She's directing now. Um, Andrea. Yeah. Directing... She was directing Voltron, uh, last I heard. 
Well, I think she's since retired now. Um, or she's like only taking a couple gigs from yeah, what I Yeah, so, she's doing my pleasure, but anyway, so. Yeah, some, some, Voltr- some Voltron day. brought her back. Some someday brought her to get her on Voltron, guest. come on. So, uh, and all then, the best stuff. And then, of course, uh, 2013, uh, young showrunner Rebecca Sugar uh, had this idea for a series called Steven Universe. <laughs> little, little, and little thing. <laughs> that was actually, 2013, I think we came out of, in November, but... We did the pilot in January of 2012, oh, yeah. and uh, Rebecca had been like concept arting it for like two years prior to that. Yeah. Stuff takes forever. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, though I, that was again another audition that just sort of showed up in my inbox, and I was like, "Cool, like this one looks fun." It's kind of, kind of it definitely caught my eye as like this is like quirky, unique, unlike most of the stuff that comes through. I could get into this and. Um, did not realize I would literally be in it, and then <laughs> then all of this would happen. It was a pleasant surprise. Oh, um, yeah. I'm just glad that a show that is so meticulously crafted is the one that gets the recognition. Um, that's that's fully Rebecca and, and the crew diverse is doing. So I'm very thankful for that. Right on, right on. It's been the uh, it's been a heck of a, it's been a heck of a ride, certainly. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember <clears throat> one San Diego Comic Con in particular, like right after Jailbreak come out had come out and we went out on stage and the reaction was like completely different from the previous year. I mean, we had our fans the previous year, but it was like, it was, it was stunning. We were like losing our minds and you know, hundreds of people that couldn't even make it inside because of the the room capacity and like 2000 people like like, singing the songs. And it's just, that was, that was a a turning point for sure. Yeah. That's what I said. But you realized this is going a little more than our expectations. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it, it's as a show. I mean, it's it's so. Um, it's unusual. I, it's it, it's so like, you know, out of left field in so many ways and, and in so many good ways. Um, it, it breaks the mold for like what a successful children's cartoon can you even call it that successful like cartoon looks like um, in so many ways. Um, so it's really it's really nice to have been a part of something like that from the from the get go. How how much did you know about the mythology and the canon and everything else? Did it kind of lay it out to you, or is it just okay? Here's this week's script. I I did like when we started. I didn't I didn't even know they were aliens. Um, <laughs> that that was like explained to me in real time as it was explained to Stephen. Yeah. Um, there was I remember one early session, like seven or eight sessions in. Like Rebecca realized, like, oh, like I haven't explained all this to them. So she sits us down, and is like, okay, so they're aliens. Uh, Garnet is two aliens, um, and just all this crazy stuff. And there's these diamond people that hate them, and there was a war, and they're five thousand years old. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, and I also had no idea the 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 complexity and the depth of like the the issues that the show would show would talk about, and the like how emotionally. Uh, dark the show would get at times and I'm so glad it is because that's exactly what I'm into but I thought I was like I thought I was gonna be the the new lead on like a quirky like comedy like bubbly children's cartoon that and like that it was just you know just that and it can be that at times but it's so much more too um it 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 really was a surprise um I just didn't know what Rebecca was capable of back then because we had just met. But I, I certainly won't make the mistake of underestimating her again <laughs> what, with whatever she does next. Uh, yeah, well, hope, hopefully you'll be a part of that. Uh, you've, been, uh, you've been plugging away your singing career, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, just so got, I just put uh, out an album in August yeah. called A Picture Perfect Hollywood Perfect Heartbreak. Perfect. I know a couple of you said you had heard it earlier. Um, I went on tour for that with Nate Wants to Battle, and uh, who I've been doing my Dungeons & Dragons show with. And just... Like getting to know my sound, it's very theatrical, like like the music of Steven Universe is. It's very near and dear and personal to me, and um, it touches on a lot of topics that could be considered taboo. Um, it, it's it's the first, um, and it, it won't be the last, but it's the first time I've been able to tell um, my story as an artist the way Rebecca has with Steven. Um, and the, the subjects I like to touch on a lot are um, like young people in Hollywood, young young performers, and their plight and why why I don't think we take good care of them. And uh, that's a story that I feel like I have a unique perspective on that isn't out there. So that's that album was an ode to that, and my, my the, the work going forward, I think, will be as well. Not a lot of yeah, younger actors in the Hollywood machine are as, are as fortunate as you. Yeah, I mean, I, 
I, I got lucky and I, I got a breakout role, but sometimes, you know, the breakout role is the death knell. Um, it can be really, um, I've always said, if I, if I was a, you know, if I booked the Disney Channel sitcom that I had been auditioning for for years and years and years, I, I might not have made it out, and not by any fault of uh, Disney per se. It's just, it, it's such a grueling thing, and I, I, I had a, I've had a hard enough time as it is. Um, I don't think there's a, enough support in place for people, um, artists and performers that are working like at an adult labor standard from a young age because it's seen as a very desirable place to be, and it's like like you're living the life. That's great, and it it's it's all it's not always. Um, often it's not. Yeah. Um, and I I have known many people close to me that have not. Um, have not been dealt the best hand because I, I I was blessed with a very good family situation and a group of friends and I still really struggled with it still really struggle with it now um, some people didn't have that and you know some some left some bad things happened some are not with us it, it's it's very it's very grave to me and it's it's been on my mind a lot which is why I've been writing a lot about it music is a good expression for that yeah no it's 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 the purest medium for that right now for me at least yeah what's the uh... What's the dream gig? Um, you're out to rub, rub, the, rub the magic lamp and, uh, and, and pick the gig. <laughs> what it would be? This is, this is a weird question to ask me right now because I'm, I'm in the middle of a massive transition period in my life. Um, right now, the, the dream gig is um, like, like we're working behind the counter at a record store. I I really I want to do something low key right now. You just want to take a break. That's fine. Yeah, I'm I'm walking away for a little while. Um, I haven't really been saying that publicly yet because I'm I'm still getting my ducks in a row. But um, and don't worry, I'm still working on Steven to its completion and all that. <laughs> um, but I I'm I'm walking away from the industry for a while to uh, just be a real boy, I guess. A, 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 a lot of predecessors you wrote, they they did that. You know, they yeah, did that. They, yeah. they 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 took off for a while, you know, and got a little got a little wisdom, got a little thing of this up, and they made they all made comebacks. Yeah, that's you know, I don't intend to walk away forever. It is yeah. very much like temporary in mind, but uh I'm not doing anybody any favors by like going out and getting slaughtered in auditions right now. It's just <laughs> it's uh there's there's just more interesting things for me on the horizon, I think. Right on, we look forward to current it. moment. Oh man, that's gonna be good. All right. Let's open up to your questions. What do you say? I'm going to put a microphone over here. Uh -huh. What are we doing? The lineup thing? Or are we just going uh, around? The lights are a little tricky in the building, so we're going to have to squint. Down with that. <clears throat> All right. Who's first? Anyone? Hi, the guy with the crazy hat. Come on up. Come on up. And everybody wants Step to Step right up. Him. Step right up. And just go ahead and take a spot behind him. How are you, man? Hello. Hey. First off, uh, great story you had here, and you're a pretty cool guy. But, Thanks, uh, man. He said during the introduction that you're also a very active environmentalist. Exactly what do you do to help the earth? So I worked with an organization called Sea Shepherd um, and did a lot of um, awareness work with them when I was younger. Um, they, If you've ever seen the show on Animal Planet Whale Wars, they do some really cool stuff. Um, interfering in illegal fishing operations around the world. Um, and that was a big thing for me for a long time. Um, a lot of awareness stuff, I'm very, these days it, it, it takes a political form. Around the midterms I was very politically active and using my social media platform and going to protests and trying to spark change that way. Um, and that's, that's my main form of change because I, I, there are a lot of young people that, that do look to me and just getting people to, um, regardless of your stance, get involved and um, and, and be, be active in that way, I think is really, really important. And it's, it's the number one way to affect change. And um, I think we have an apathy problem um, in this country with people who just can't be bothered. And I think that's, um, that's, that has to be stopped. So that's, that's what I've been working on from, from a political and an environmental stance, because right now I think they're hand in hand. That's deep, thank you. Thank you, Good boss. question, thank you. Who's that? This is my, go to the microphone. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Come on up here. Come on up here. All right. Hey, what's special your treatment. Come right to the front. Uh, Ella Lincoln. Okay, well, what do you got for us? Um, uh, so, how long have you do, been doing the voice? The voice of Steven? Yeah. Um, let's see, it'd be seven years now, so exactly one third of my life. Wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> if um, we're reducing it to yeah. fractions. I think I've been watching Steven Universe about four, three, or two years, and um, when I I do follow Rebecca Sugar on Instagram and stuff, and it does inspire me sometimes because yeah. it does like it shows different gems and stuff, how their bodies look, and it helps me through rough times too. Let it be said to everyone in this room that if you are an artist of any kind, there is no better role model than Rebecca Sugar. And I, I will say that for, for years to come. Yeah. I um, do draw a lot of stuff about it. I draw fusions and new gems and stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. I, you brought some art by earlier, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, at, the, at the booth. It was really good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Now, keep it up. Like Everybody that's inspired by this show, like that's we as artists, we're all inspired by another show, another thing. And you guys who who do fan art of our show, you're carrying the torch and can create something to inspire somebody else. And that, it's sort of, it's like a generation line thing that I think is beautiful to watch. And conventions are like an amazing breeding ground for that kind of thing. Yeah. My Instagram thing is Blaygirl7, so. Blake Laurel 7 Yeah, Blaygirl7. Got you. Like Laurel, like L-A-U-R-E-L? Yeah, Blaygirl07. Like oh, okay, girl. Cool, cool. All right, all right, that's where we are. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's one for you, and there's one for the two folks over there that you've been like, driving crazy. Okay, hold on, hold on. All right, there, there. All right, thank you very much. Round of applause for you later. You won artwork. a fantastic prize. All right, all right, the microphone's right there. It's right there, yeah, there you go. It's okay, it's okay. Okay, hello. Okay. Hi, um, what, what's your no, name? Uh, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin, what you got for us? Uh, I'm just curious, uh, who's your favorite diamond in Steven Universe and why? White. White? For uh, <clears throat> reasons. Oh, sorry. Okay. What's that? Uh. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, no, she's my favorite. Her character designs when I first saw them, like even when they were not even completely finished yet, I mean, my jaw like went through the floor to China. Um, and there, there's a lot more reasons in upcoming <clears throat> episodes <clears throat> that are coming out. <clears throat> Reasons. Next month. Reasons. We cannot talk about. They did announce the new episodes are coming out next month, right? That is a thing? Okay. I've been telling people that. I'm like, that is public, right? I was, I was surprised because I, this is the first time I found out the episodes were coming out before they actually came out. Normally, I find out on Twitter, like, the day after. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good question. Hello again. Hi. Hi what's your name? How'd those Polaroids turn out? They turn out really good. Nice. <laughs> the finger guns one, was that? I think the diamond one was the best. Okay. Well, I tried. <laughs> um, I, what I want to know is, um, obviously, when you played a lot of parts and stuff, you keep a little bit of your character with you. How has Steven influenced who you are today? Steven, like, I, I see Steven as, like, a positive influence on me because I think he um, he sees the world in a more enlightened way than I do. I've, I've always been, like, a natural pessimist. And I think like having Steven around has, has helped me combat that in some ways. Um, I'm a bit too nihilist for my own good sometimes, and Steven is like whatever the opposite of that is. Um, he's very positive in his outlook, so I think that's been helpful. Thank you. Hello. Hi, what's your name? I'm Guinevere. Um, uh, my question was like, what's your favorite thing about acting as like Steven? Working with the cast is, the, I mean, they're family now, um, and and Rebecca and the crew, and I mean, we have a really, we have a really good rhythm. I, I feel, um, and there's no, no studio environment or a setting where I feel like more at ease than going into record for Steven these days, just because it's, it's familiar and it, it it's it works, um, and it just clicks like that, and I, I love I love that flow and the relationships I have with the people I work with. Thank you. I love your hair, by Thank the you. way. Thank you. I love yours. <laughs> we match. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Jay, and just like you, I have always been a very crazy theater kid. I can relate. <laughs> so um, I was wondering, because I've also done both voice acting and stage acting, which do you prefer, doing it live on stage or in the studio at the mic? Uh, really, I mean, it really depends on, like, what particular production I'm, I'm doing um there there you know there's some voiceover gigs like steven that are like incredibly artistically fulfilling and awesome to work on and i'm i'm definitely going to choose that over like you know any old you know production of a musical i don't like to dance on stage but like on the other hand you know there's some voiceover gigs that are like 
like promo, like like for commercials and stuff that are you know very like by the books. Like we're we're just here to get it done and get out of here. Um, versus some plays I've done, like straight plays that are like incredibly dramatic, um, you know, dark graphic stories that I've worked on with my theater company. And uh, it really just depends on the production entirely. If it's if it's red meat for an actor, then I'm I'm there. Um, that's that's the best stuff to work on. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, boss. Yo. Yo. Um, dig the denim jacket. Um, my name <laughs> Thank is you. Jeffrey. Um, I have a question with you involving uh, voice acting. Okay. So um, we kind of went over it a bit earlier when they were talking about like taking like an optimistic element and stuff like that. Sorry, I, I didn't quite catch that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's adjustable. Okay. Yeah. Um, so my question was like you were talking about like how you take like this optimistic part of you and stuff like that. Are there like certain characters or people in your life that you try to invoke in this character, or is this just a part of you that sort of comes out when you voice act as Steven? Steven, I wouldn't say there was any particular reference for. Um, I, I think it, there were like certain elements of my own personality that got injected into him, which I think every actor does with every character to some degree, but I definitely lean on that heavily. Um, and I think back when I like first started playing Steven, I was very much Steven in real life. Um, and as I've grown, I think we we sort of have this dichotomy now where we we exist together on certain planes and on others we differ. But when I started, it was very much an extension of my own personality in a lot of ways. Not fully, but uh, to the point where you could definitely see the the influence. And now it's a lot more of like a departure from my normal um, personality. But because I've been doing it for so long, it, it's established there, and I can access it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, hey, hi. Man. Hey. What's your name? Sorry. My name's Tim, and uh, I have like a little bit a theory that's gone in my head for some time that I mm -hmm. hope that you're okay with to hear about it. Sure. Okay. Uh, since now that Steven and the Gems and Connie is in like Homeworld and stuff, uh, I have like a thought that what would happen if like White Diamond captured Connie, he while Steven and the Gems are left Homeworld by a larger ship and incinerate. Or, and but and some reason that Steven leave Connie behind in home world. What is your reaction on that? That would be the worst day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so sad. <laughs> um, yeah, Con I mean Connie would have a hard time surviving on home world because I don't they don't exactly have a lot of food lying around <laughs> or other practical things. That would be really un that would be really yeah, dire. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully that doesn't happen in those <clears throat> episodes coming up in December. <clears throat> Hello? Security, Hi. get that man. He has the secret plans. <laughs> hey there. Hey. All right, so what's your opinion on Stephen and Connie? Do you ship the two? He's got the secret plans, too. <laughs> Close the doors. No one gets out of here. Bam, bam, bam. Red alert. Um... Yeah, I you know what I I totally ship it. Uh, not right now, but like I see it happening down the line. Um, I I support it. And it's up to Rebecca if that's like if that's actually in mind. But at the very least, it's a beautiful friendship, and that's always a good foundation for that sort of thing. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hello. My name's Jesse. Um, in voice acting, um, what do you do differently to prepare for Steven versus your other characters? Um, I, I tend to do a lot more like vocal warm ups and stuff, um, because the voice, you know, it's way up there and I, I start at nine in the morning. So, um, other characters are closer to my natural voice or I have some in like my lower register. Um, like my character for Dark and Dicey, Art of the Dragon Show, it's like way down here. It's got the, the, the gravel to it and I can go in after like, I could eat a bag of nails and I'd be fine <laughs> doing that voice. Um, that's on the physical level and emotionally like... Like for Steven, like I said, it's like the process is so like nailed down now. I don't even, um, I don't even have to like look at the, the record material before I go. I just get there, like it's put in front of me. Rebecca explains it, and we go. Other things, like if it's a new project, a new character, like I go through the material and like do some prep work and um, like really understand like what I'm getting into because oftentimes you know months pass between the audition and the material, and there's all sorts of new stuff and curveballs thrown at you. So I'd say that's the main difference preparation wise. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone back there have a tissue by chance? <laughs> anyone backstage? Yeah. Keep, nah. keep, keep talking. I'll sell. Thanks, Maddie. 
Howdy. I got them allergies acting up. You're obviously a very musical person, and you're in, you love music, and no, you know, I can't stand it. <laughs> you said <laughs> right. Uh, you said that you wanted to spend some time behind a you know oh, record, thank you. record music store or something like that. Thank you, dear. So my question is, what's on your playlist right now? Who are you listening to? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> All right, let's open up Spotify. Hang on. You're the you're the hero. Okay. She's gonna have to wait a sec. Um. <laughs> Tame Impala has been a like on repeat lately. All three records, um, New Twenty One Pilots. You give us this year, we give you candy. <laughs> um, a lot of uh, Grimes. Anybody listen to Grimes? She just dropped a new single that's like it's weird, dude. It's like um, like if Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails was like an anime waifu. It's very strange. Um, Brockhampton. If anybody's into hip hop, Brockhampton's really good. Um, Blonde by Frank Ocean's always on there. Um, middle era Beatles like Revolver, Rubber Soul, Sgt. Pepper's. Um, OK Computer by Radiohead, some DJ Shadow, like breakbeat hip hop, like 90s EDM. Um, yeah, that's that's like all the stuff in my recents. And then I put together a playlist that I'm like, I'm experimenting with like a rootsier sound for my new stuff. So there's a bunch of weird stuff in there, like Queen and Childish Gambino's new stuff and um, James Brown, Ty Seagal, Eric Clapton, some classics, some new stuff. Thank that, you so much. No, thank you. That's my favorite thank question. You. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. You, All can, right. you can turn Hello. it upwards. Sit, upwards. Adjust. There you go. All right. We good? Yes, we sir. Good. All right. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Gavin. Hi, Gavin. Um, so you mentioned that you worked with Nate once to battle before. Uh, so how is it working with him and his group of friends? Freaking awesome, dude. I mean, he's, he's become a really dear friend over the past year. It kind of all happened at once. Like, He's like, hey, man, you want to be in this uh, Dungeons and Dragons show? I'm like, sure. I've only played like five times. Let's do this. Um, and then a couple weeks later, he's like, hey, you want to be in my music video? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. He's like, hey, you want to come on tour with me? And I'm like, what? Let me, let me check my, uh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> um, so we've been, we've been doing all sorts of stuff. Um, he's, he's awesome, super talented. Tour was like one of the best experiences of my life. And Dark and Dicey has been amazing. So yeah, I have him to thank for a lot from 2018. Right. A lot of the highlights. Excellent. Happy holidays to you, sir. Yeah, you too, yeah, man. To you, man. Thank you. Hey, how's it going? Good, boss. Hey. What's your name? Uh, name's Elliot. Hey. I was just wondering, like, uh, preface, I love Steven Universe, by the way. I've loved it ever since high school, which I recently graduated. Anyway. Hey, I congratulations. Was just, I was just wondering, do you have a favorite song that you did on SCU? Of my, of my songs? Or just, uh, yeah, one of your songs. Uh, it's a tie between both of you from Mr. Greg and um, the new one, Let's Only Think About Love from Reunited. Ah, uh, very good. Three and a half minutes long, new record. Took a long time. Took a long time, but very much worth it. Cool. All right. Well, thank you. Hope you have a good day. Hey, you thanks, too man. Well, you too. Man. Thank you. Congrats on graduating. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm Rebecca, and I was sugar. <laughs> no. <laughs> In disguise. She has the secret codes. <laughs> she is the secret code. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I was wondering, what was your favorite episode so far that you've voice acted in? Steven and the Stevens is up there. Um, that, that, that record was uh, like a, made me a nutcase in the best way. I mean, I'm having conversations with myself. I'm like playing a hundred different Stevens, beating each other up at the end. Like, it's just a lot, a lot. Um, Mr. Greg was cool because, you know, it was like breaking the 11 minute cartoon format into this beautiful musical. Um, Bismuth was cool, bringing in a new character like that for the first time in a while and um, getting really deep into the lore. Um, some really cool ones that haven't come out yet. <laughs> um, Storm in the Room was a really cool one. I got to record with Susan Egan for the first time um, as Rose. It's kind of a terrifying episode, but, you know, there's a, a lot of good stuff. Very sad, very sad. It's one of the saddest I think we've done. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hey again. Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's loud. Um, so if so, you said like the staff's like your family, and I was wondering, um, what has been like your favorite episode to record with the staff? Like, who? Um, I remember one in particular. I don't even remember what episode this was, but it's just a funny story. Yeah. Um, so Grace, who plays Connie, and I were in the studio, um, and there's there's some bit where Stephen and Connie have like a mouthful of like watermelon or food or something and they're like, we're not talking like this. 
And normally we, you know, we just simulate it or we like, you know, put a finger like this. But it wasn't, it didn't have like the, the chubby bunny like kind of sound that, that Rebecca like really specifically wanted for this. So she had Matt uh, Burnett, one of our writers, literally run to CVS and buy like, she's like, go buy the jumbo size marshmallows. And we're going we're gonna to actually play Chubby Bunny and stuff them in their cheeks, right? So we, like, move on, and then he comes back, like, 15 minutes later, like, runs in the room. He's like, okay, I'm back. And um, he holds up the bag, and they, it was like, it must have been Halloween or something, because they had, like, novelty size jumbo marshmallows. So they weren't like this. They were, like, like this. <laughs> so we both just, like, take two, put them in our cheeks, barely. And, and it apparently was exactly the sound that Rebecca needed, and that's that's how we like spent budget money on novelty sized marshmallows. Um, I'm assuming someone ate them upstairs afterwards, because that's where all the food goes. Um, I don't even remember what episode that was, but it's a good it's a good memory. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Hey there. Oppa. <laughs> all right. Uh, I got a curveball for you. I don't know if you know about. Gundam, but what Gundam do you think Steven would pilot? Uh, I, I don't know anything about Gundam, but the one that was in Ready Player One was really cool. <laughs> uh, that was the original Gundam. <clears throat> What's that? The original, in other words, the first Gundam. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the classic one. I know what yeah. that one looks like. So, um, I'll choose that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know more about it. Hello. Hi. Hey, what's up? So, did you grow up watching Cartoon Network? I did. Like, early 2000s Cartoon Network was, like, my jam. Mm, best Cartoon Network. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that was a good era, for sure. Um, so Codename Kids Next Door was my favorite. It was good stuff. I guess that answers my question, then. <laughs> was, What's that? <laughs> I guess that answers my question. I was going to ask what your favorite shows were. That was one. Uh, Billy and Mandy, of course. Um, I've been able to do some convention stuff with Richard Horvitz, actually, which has been really fun. Um, nostalgia trip for me. Dexter's, uh, Samurai Jack, Powerpuff Girls. Oh, Courage. Uh, Courage, Courage! I had to like take small doses. That was, that was a lot. Um, but yeah, all those, all those shows from that era I was totally into. Um, I couldn't watch Cartoon Network at my house because <clears throat> Dad didn't want to get the cable package that had Cartoon Network, so I had to watch PBS Kids, which was good. Arthur, Arthur is a great show. Clifford. But when I was at my grandparents' house, that was when I like put on the chain and became a baller because I had Cartoon Network <laughs> access. And they they were so cool. They hooked it up where they would like record episodes of Codename and Kids Next Door for me on VHS tapes and then send them to my house like a like a bike messenger. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? Says, what, what's, what's a VHS? What's a VHS? <laughs> It's these like weird novelty things that people put vaporwave music on, right? Yeah. I actually, I just bought a bootleg VHS at a music festival last month and I was like, yeah, this is so cool. Like nobody's done this in like 30 years. Um, yeah, like I bought it, there was this like knockoff, like, um, has anyone ever listened to King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard? I just saw them at Desert Days last month and I like, I went crowd surfing and like my phone fell out of my backpack, like, all this crazy stuff happened and I was so enchanted by their show that I, I found out they were selling, like, like not the band, like, people at the, the um, like, the, I'm completely blanking, the, the, like, the audio tower, like, where they, they have all the board, people that were working up there that had, like, backstage access, they were, like, secretly selling these, like, art tapes set to the music of King Gizzard, like, behind the audio stand, like, hey, kid, like, you want some VHS tapes? <laughs> So I went over Lots there. It was like VHS. It was ten bucks for this like really cool like red and like specially lined red and black VHS tape with this cool art on it. I was like, this is this is the best gift ever. I'm not so impressed with the fact that you bought a VHS and the fact that that implies you have a working VCR. I do actually. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> kicking it old school. I got a record player, a VCR. I just need a cassette deck in my car, and I'm set. <laughs> cool. Thank you. <laughs> I was thinking about doing a limited run of cassettes for my album, actually, like just for me. Just to have, like, hand out on, like, a street corner in Hollywood. Like, yo, bump my album. People be like, what the hell Excuse is this? Me. Excuse me, aren't you Zach? Yes, I am. Here, have a cassette. <laughs> have a cassette. <laughs> and uh, run. Pusha T, the, the rapper, just dropped his album on cassette, actually. I was like, that's awesome. Like, let's, let's bring this back. The audio quality is not anywhere close to vinyl. It's terrible, but it's, it's a nostalgia trip. Sorry, you have a question. Do you have any... 
I think I think the mic just was gravely injured when it was dropped on the ground. What did you say? Do you have any advice for people who want to become a performer? Any advice for people that want to what? Be a performer. Be a performer. Be a performer. Um, yeah, I mean, the main thing, like for specifically voice acting, the biggest tip I give is um, like play characters, not voices. Um, it's more than it's more than just performing. Like you have to you have to be thinking the thoughts and feeling it on the inside if it's gonna um, portray realistically and genuinely on the outside. Um, but as long as you're as long as you're truly believing the things that the character is believing and tricking yourself into it, which is an impossible thing, like it takes years to really do that. But that's that's like you find the joy of it when you like trick yourself into that and you know you're in that and you like become this different person. It's a wonderful it's a wonderful phenomenon. And uh, and don't give up at first rejection or second or seventieth because it, it happens a lot. That's just the nature of the business. Everybody wants to do it, and um, it's it's all about moving past that. Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck. Hey there. Um, so I've actually never seen Steven Universe. Um, Leave! <laughs> no, that's cool. I'm here because of my friend, um, and the only things I really know about it are that you're in it and that Patty Lapone was in it. Um, that's true, yes. So Yellow I feel Diamond. like best person to ask, give me a rundown. Steven Universe for dummies. Should I watch it? All right. <laughs> Um, let's see. We only have five minutes. Oh, no. the, I, there's, there's a way to compress this. Um, so there's these rock people, right? And they're all sorts of pretty colors. And they got these wacky personalities. And you find out, like, not that far into the show, that they're actually from space. And they have a dark history. And they all emotionally wounded each other at some point. And they're trying to figure out how to move past that while also saving the world and singing songs about it. My kind of thing. Thanks. See? Another another DVD sold. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out here. I'm out here pushing it. Um, I just kind of... Your opinion on... Who think... Sorry, the <laughs> mic's cutting out. What'd you say? Yeah, I, I, I kind of wanted your opinion on how do you think the music in Steven Universe has influenced the show? I mean, it's like a chicken and egg problem because, you know, the music is so central to the show that it's like... Um, mm -hmm. It's like they're one and the same. Um, I think that the music has definitely evolved over time. You go back and listen to like the original theme song or Giant Woman. Like they were these like little ditties, you know, and they they became this these like incredibly uh, like cinematic, epic numbers. And I think that reflects the the arc of the show as well. I don't know if that was nece necessary to tell the gravity of the story as it was becoming you know higher and higher stakes, or if you know the show was you know, going that way because the music was getting more intense. I would say it's probably the former. Um, it was out of necessity. The music had to, you know, tell these increasingly um, grand stories, um, and the sound definitely evolved in that way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Don't want, don't want this thing to go on, on me. <laughs> yeah, hold on tight. So... So most of the questions I've heard have been about Steven Universe, but my question is about one of the lesser known roles you might have played, uh, Billy Batson from some of the Justice League cartoons. Yeah. So my question is, if you could be any, play any superhero, Marvel or DC or third party, who would you be? Arm fall off boy. I actually know who that is. He's fantastic. So oh, do is, I. Oh, is, is, is it right? His right or his left arm is capable of falling off, and he can pick it up. And that, that's that's what he does. That's what don't he does. forget, he really? brags. He beats people up with it. Oh yeah. well, of course, yeah, that's a given. <laughs> but the actual supernatural part of it is he can drop it. Picking up your own arm is not. It's not that big of an achievement. Um, I think there's some really interesting moral moral quandaries with him that would be fun to play. No, really. Um, Probably some somebody in the X Men universe. That was my original favorite superhero stuff. Um, Cyclops is cool. Um, oh, you know what? Like some of the people from the original cartoon, um, I, I couldn't play Jubilee. Like I'm the complete opposite of Jubilee, but she was my favorite coming up. Um, so someone with her powers maybe would be really cool. I can see you being as like Iceman. You seem like you have that personality. Being what? Iceman. You know, ice powers. Oh, totally. Actually, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll go with that. He's like a core core X Men team member. As long as I'm like in there, you know, on the missions. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Hello again. Hi again. Oh 
God. <laughs> um, I do have a Stephen question. Okay. Um, and I remember you talking about how Stephen's super optimistic and really happy, and we love him for that. But do you think he would be different if he knew everything before it all started, like about Rose and the diamonds? I think there is a pure heartedness to Stephen that would not have completely gone away. But I think if he was just like blindsided with all that information at once, it probably would have led him to be a little more skeptical of the world around him and hindered his development as a person. Um, it's probably for the best that the gems kept certain things from him as much as it upset him at the time. Uh, I, I understand what they were trying to do. You know, it's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Soldier. Hi. Howdy. Um, you have a lot of talents and voices and stuff like that. Do you think you'd ever make your own like show or anything? Uh, I have actually, um, never saw the light of day cause, uh, uh, lawyers got involved. Um, <laughs> but I was working on a sketch series called The Zach Callison Show where I was singing and dancing and making a fool out of myself and wearing wigs and dresses and heels. This is this crazy. This is all these different sketches. I had a do-rag on at one point. Um, it's, it, it's still going to happen at some point. It might take 10 years, but it's, it's going to happen. I still really believe in the idea of it. It was more than just like a sketch comedy show. It was a sort of like a meta commentary on like the war between artists and money men and I I was like caught in the middle of it as this characterized version of Zach Callison um, and we shot like 17 digital shorts for it and then things happened and it'll be revealed in my tell-all book in 20 years but um, yes I, I have attempted it before and I, I will be finishing it eventually. One of these days we'll see you. Mm -hmm. One of these days. We One have just days. a few minutes left, so we are going to go to a lightning round of questions. All right, this is how this works. Hey, what's your name? What's your question? I am Johnny. In the show, you have a lot of uh, silly, silly idioms and sort of uh, catchphrases. How many of those are yours and how many are scripted? Almost all of them are scripted. Um, there have been a couple of things where I've like I've added things to lines that aren't in there. I can't think of any in particular, but most of the time it's scripted. Boom, thank you. Next, what's your name, what's your question? Uh, my name is Charlie and I'm wondering, what do you think is like the saddest moment throughout the entire show? Saddest moment in the entire show? Uh, storm in the room was pretty bad. <laughs> um, I'm, pro I'm missing a million right now. Um, oh, it's over, isn't it? That's like, that's heartbreaking. That's gotta take it, I think. Boom, what's your name, what's your question? Hey, I'm Bobby, what's your favorite 21 Pilots song? Ooh, um, all time, taxi cab, uh, um, the, of the new stuff, leave the city. Leave the city has been like hitting me hard because it's like about this phase of my life and it's, it's too real. Um, but every song is amazing. They're like top three for me. Boom. What's your name? What's your question? Um, hi, I'm Rachel. Um, how was your experience with working in Legend of Korra? Sorry, I didn't catch all that. What was your experience in getting into Legend of Korra? It was pretty straightforward with the audition process and stuff. Uh, and then I, I got in and I was doing Young Tarlock for the second time I went in. I was like, oh, man, I just walked into the, like, like the climax of the first season, like, not knowing anything about what's going on. And there's, like, people are bloodbending and, like, I'm, like, screaming out in pain. Like, my brother's, like, fighting me. Like, what's going on? Um, all was revealed later. But it was definitely, like, an intense experience at first. Boom. What's your name? What's your question? Uh, my name is also Rachel. I'm sure you've heard of uh, alternate universes. What do you think Steven would be like if he was the son of White Diamond? I caught like 30% of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, alternate universes? What do you think Steven Universe would be like if he was the son of White Diamond? <laughs> <laughs> really Boom! Next question! Really, <laughs> really savage. <laughs> what's your name? What's your question? My name's John. Um, do you recognize my cosplay? Do you game? Uh, yes, I am a recovering gaming addict. Um, I'm act act that recovering. What am I saying? I brought my PS4 with me, and I'm playing Red Dead all night tonight. Like, let's be real here. <laughs> what's your name? What's your question? Jay, and I was wondering, what do you think is one of the most valuable lessons taught in the show of Steven Universe? Great way to end it. Um, individuality and, like, the fact that you can be anyone you want to be and and... Look however you want to look, and that's okay. I think that's really important. Great way to end it. Zach Callison, what social media outlets can we follow you on if we don't already? I, I just add Zach Callison on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Friendster, MySpace. I don't, I don't, 
Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, the main ones, and then uh, I have a website, ZachCallison.com. Please check out my music if you're so inclined. That is, like, near and dear to my heart. I'm on Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, all that, just as my name. This is Zach Callison, and I'm Patty Hawkins. That was our time. Round of applause for our guest. He's going to be at his guys. table.